Let's learn how to power up a charge shot in Unity. Welcome back everybody to another Unity tutorial where today we're going to power up and unleash a powerful charge shot like that seen in Mega Man, Metroid and more. So when you're ready, grab your power busters, let's crack on. If you don't have a project of your own, don't worry, you can download this project from the link in the description. When everyone is ready, let's discuss our scene. First, I have my weapon here, the arm cannon, and attached to it are two child game objects. First, I have the fire point highlighted by this orange mark here. This is from where we will instantiate our beams, our projectiles. Speaking of which, I have my two projectiles here, beam and charge beam. I've added a rigid body 2D to them because I will apply a force to them from the point from which they're instantiated from the weapon. Make sure the gravity scale is zero and make sure you've added them to your prefabs folder like so. I'll remove these from the scene. I no longer need them. And secondly, you'll notice we have an inactive object, charge effect. We will discuss this a little later on, but for now, let's go to our scripts folder and create our weapon controller script and open it up. For the weapon controller, our variables will be as follows. We want a public transform for the fire point. We also want two public game objects for our prefabs, the beam and the charge beam. And we also want to create a public game object for that charge effect as well. When we instantiate the beams from the arm cannon, we want to give them a speed. So we'll have a public float shot speed. And the last two will be serialized so we can see them in the inspector. And that'll be a ball is charging and a float called charge time. With our variables in place, let's go ahead and create our shoot mechanic. Create a void called shoot and inside we will do as follows. We will create a new game object variable, which we will call shot. That will be the instantiated beam object, which we will instantiate from the firepoint.position and the firepoint.rotation. Like I said before, I'm going to apply a force to the rigid body of the beam prefabs, the shot, but I need to get that component first. So underneath, we will say rigid body 2D and we'll call it the shot RB will equal the shot game object that we've instantiated, the beam dot get component rigid body 2D. Once we have that rigid body component, we can then go ahead and apply the force to it. Underneath, we'll type the shot RB dot add force then inside the brackets, I need a direction for my shot. So I will have that right of the fire point because my weapon is facing right. And that'll be the fire point dot right multiplied by our shot speed. Then at the end, what force type? Force mode 2D dot impulse. So this will be an instantaneous force. Then finally, if you like, you don't have to do this, but we don't want lots of prefabs in our scene. So we can destroy that game object after one second by simply saying destroy the instantiated shot dot game object after one second. That's the shoot function sorted. Let's go and create a void called charge shoot. And all we're going to do is copy and paste these lines of code in here like so. The only changes we're going to make, of course, are the game object we wish to instantiate, and that'll be our charge beam. We'll also change the names of the game object to charge shot and name the rigid body 2D to charge RB as well. And that's all we need for charge shooting for now. Let's go to update and punch in our inputs. As most games use the left mouse button for shooting, so too will we. And we'll do that by punching in if in the brackets input dot get mouse button down zero, that's the left mouse button. Then of course we want to call our shoot function. But what about the charge shoot function? In order to charge our attack, we will hold down the left mouse button by using if input dot get mouse button zero. The difference here is get mouse button down rings true the frame the button is pressed, whereas get mouse button rings true for every frame the button is held down. When we hold down the button, we want two things to happen. We want to change our is charging ball to true. And of course we want to charge up our shot. So our charge time will plus equal that of time dot delta time. So our charge time will increase for however long we hold down the button. 
So, for how long do we want to hold down charge? I think one second will do just fine. And at any point after one second, we release the left mouse button, we will unleash our charge shot. So, to do that underneath, let's put if input dot get mouse button up. So when we release the button and the charge time is greater than or equal to one, then of course we want to call upon our charge sheet function. Also, we want to reset the charge time if we release under one second. So underneath we'll say else if input dot get mouse button up and charge time is less than one, then reset the charge time. So we have the opportunity to charge our attack again. We also want to reset the charge time once the charge shot has been released. In order to do that, let's go back to our charge shoot function. And at the bottom, let's just simply say is charging is false and the charge time equals zero. With all that out of the way, let's hit save and give this a test fire. Before we can test fire this weapon, let's first set it up in the inspector, add your weapon controller script to the weapon, and let's fill out the requirements such as fire point. And of course the charge effect, we'll come to that in just a moment. Let's also add the ammunition we want to shoot, our beam and charge beam from the prefabs, just like so. And let's give this quite a fast speed. I'm gonna give a shot speed of 30. Okay, let's hit play and see how this works. So let's left click to shoot and let's hold and you can see the charge time increasing in the inspector. We're well over one second, let's release. And there we go, our charge shot. So have some fun with that. However, when we charge an attack, normally in Metroid and Mega Man, there's a cool charging effect. So let's put that into action. So what we're going to do is our charge point is in the same spot as the fire point. We're going to set it active when we're charging and then when we unleash our charge, set it inactive again. And we're also going to scale it up. For that, we'll write a new script called charge effect. Let's add it to the charge effect and open the script up. In order to increase the scale of our object, we're going to need some variables such as a public float scale speed. How fast do we want this to increase in size? And we also are going to clamp it between two values, float min scale and max scale. It will not scale larger than its maximum scale. And in order to change the scale, we're going to use a vector two, which we will call scale. Now, as we're going to be disabling and enabling this object, we're going to want to create two new methods called private void on enable and private void on disable. When we enable an object, we want certain things to happen. Likewise with on disable. But first, let's scale up this object in the update. Let's punch in scale equals a new vector two. I'm going to increase it on its X axis between min and max scale. So we will use mathf.clamp, then in the brackets scale.x plus equal time dot delta time multiplied by scale speed. And then of course, between our minimum and maximum scale. We don't want to increase on the Y, so scale.y remains the same. Then underneath, this is the same again, except for the Y axis. So scale equals new vector two, scale.x as it is. Then again, the mathf.clamp for the scale.y. We also then want to update our current scale. So we'll say that the transform.local scale equals scale. With this code in place, what's going to happen is as we charge our shot, the charge effect object will increase in size to its max scale. When we release the shot, we're going to disable that object, but the scale will remain at its maximum. So we need to reset the scale upon disable. So in void on disable, let's punch in that the transform.local scale equals a new vector two, one, one. That is its default scale. Also, once we enable the object, cause it will be at its default scale, it would be wise for us to make a reference to its current transform.local scale using scale equals transform.local scale. So let's hit save. Then let's head back into the weapon controller script and make this charge effect happen with our inputs. First, let's go to input.getMassButton down. As we start charging, we don't want our charge effect to become active when we're just going for a normal shot. So what we will do, we'll create an if statement 
that says if is charging equals true and charge time is less than 0.1 F, this will act as a buffer. So it's not going to activate and become active when we shoot normally. Then the charge effect dot set active equals true. Then once we've released our charge shot, we want to set it as false. And we'll do that in here. We'll simply add charge effect dot set active false. And the same again in this one too. So that should all be set up. Hit save. Let's head back into Unity. Let's set up the values for the charge effect. As we're going to be charging for a second, I'm going to give it a scale speed of one. The max scale of the object will be the size of the charge beam. So if you have a look at the charge beam, you'll see it has a scale of two on the X and Y. We double its size. So I will have the max scale as two. So let's hit save and give this a final test. So first let's shoot. That works fine. Now let's hold down for a charge shot. There we go. We've set our charge effect active. You can see it's scaled up. Let's release. That looks pretty good. And when we charge again, you'll see that the charge effect has reset back to its default scale. Happy days. And there we go. We have created a charge shoot mechanic complete with a charge effect. I hope this tutorial was useful to you all. And please do experiment and adjust this as you see fit for your projects. If you see the value in what we're doing, please do consider subscribing. Your support really goes a long way. It is much appreciated. Until next time, guys, have fun, continue learning, and I'll see you soon. Take care.